Hello everyone, it's me, Prickly Procyonids. I'm back here today with another video about owning Quatamundi as pets. Specifically, this time it's going to be five fun facts about owning them as pets. Or just five facts that everyone should know if they're interested in one. I know some people won't be too happy about this video because they don't think Quatamundi or any other exotic animals should be pets. And that's completely fine. You don't have to agree with my views, this isn't that sort of video. But the fact of the matter here is that telling people not to own something, not to do something, barely ever works. It doesn't matter how many times you tell them, people do what they want to do, and the continued existence of sanctuaries and rescues specializing in caring for exotic animals attests to this very fact. I think differently about things. If you really want these animals, I will give you helpful information on how to handle and care for them. Responsibly, of course. Today we'll be talking about Quatamundi, a species I love and own. I'll be using some footage of my boy Vega, who I've owned for 7 or 8 years I think. If you're looking for more generalized information on owning Quatamundi, I've written an article here and posted a video discussion here. Fact 1. They smell. Yep, you heard that right. Not a lot of people know about this one, but quaddies have a musky odor similar to a ferret or a skunk. Bathing definitely helps with this, but it will always be there. I don't find the odor offensive at all, personally, but I've been around all sorts of animals for years, so I'm probably biased and nose blind. If you're keeping yours indoors, be aware that they have an odor. Fact 2. They're destructive. Quaddies are the definition of curious, and they certainly don't stop to think about your opinion before getting into everything. If you put a bucket of paint in the room, your quaddy is going to go check it out and probably spill it all over the place, just by accident. They aren't the type of animal to just sit and chew on things like a dog, but they love to investigate things. They also have a weird obsession with things that smell strange, like soap and paint and they love to spill them just to rub them into their coats. This is a behavior that's called self-anointing, and we don't really know why they do it yet, but they have a lot of fun with it, and it's pretty dang cute. Long story short, you'll have to put some thought into how you're going to keep certain things out of reach from your Quatamundi. Fact 3. They need far more space than people tell you. A lot of online information, specifically from breeders, says that you can keep Quatamundi in large dog crates or bird cages meant for macaws. I've never tried these except for when Vega was a tiny, tiny baby, but I can't imagine how this would ever work unless the door is left open for your Quatamundi to come and go as he pleases. Quatamundi are extremely energetic animals and they're really friendly. They want to be with you. If you aren't allowing them to free roam your house, then they're going to need an outdoor enclosure that's uh, at least 20 feet long, and far larger if you're working with more Quatamundi, or if they aren't tame and they can't be taken outside to play. This is the case with many sanctuaries or just people that want to work with animals that need a home. They probably aren't going to be friendly and you won't be able to take them out, so they need a lot of space to be able to entertain themselves and have a good quality of life. Fact 4 they can become one-person animals. If you're an animal enjoyer or a bird owner, then you're probably already familiar with the term one-person animal. Quaddies, especially the white nose and South American ringtails, are prone to only tolerating their owner after they reach puberty. Now this definitely is impacted by how much you socialize them as babies, and how often you introduce them to new people when they're younger, but I think it's safe to say that you shouldn't expect yours to get along with strangers or other family members. And when you're talking about an animal that has large, sharp teeth, then I really wouldn't risk it in the first place. Just keep them away from people that you don't want touching them. And that they probably don't want touching them. Fact 5. They can do more damage than people would assume. I don't think Quatamundi are inherently dangerous animals, and they certainly don't want to bite or attack people, and 
I really haven't heard much of them hurting anybody to begin with. But they can do damage. And most people are not aware just how large their canine teeth are. Quaddies have a really goofy and innocent look to them, but their bites can pack a punch and send you to the emergency room for stitches. The canines are uniquely shaped like a blade and much larger than those of a kinkachu or raccoon. It's always better to be safe than sorry. So, if the thought of being bitten is just too much for you to handle, which is completely fine and most people are like that, then you should probably reconsider your interest in getting a Quadamundi. Of course, I can't tell you what to do or make you do anything, it's just my two cents. And I hope that you'll make an informed decision and have fun with your animal or have fun not having your animal. That's it for the video and thank you for spending the time out of your day to watch.